For NYUP and Syracuse.com, this is Matt Perino, and I'm joined again tonight uh, by my tag team partner, Ryan Talbot. Uh, busy day number two uh, of the legal tampering period ahead of free agency for the Buffalo Bills. Four more players expected to be signed when free agency begins in a couple days. Wow, a, a lot of action the last two days, Ryan. I mean, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think Brendan Bean has a checklist of positions that he wanted to address, and, and he just keeps knocking them off one by one. Uh, the Bills could have could have signed, by tomorrow at least, three new starting uh, offensive linemen. Obviously, Mitch Morris is a starter. There's no question about that. Uh, but they also signed two other offensive linemen, John Feliciano and Ty Insecki. And, and, and both of those players could be in the mix for starting jobs along the offensive line. So you have Josh Allen protection, two new wide receivers, John Brown being a, a perfect fit for for uh, Josh Allen's skill set in terms of the speed aspect. You have Brown and you have Robert Foster on the outside now. They signed Cole Beasley. Uh, footwork reminds me a little bit of Stevie Johnson, uh, obviously a fan favorite in, in Buffalo. So I think that was an under-the-radar signing, too, especially when you saw some of the uh, other top slot wide receivers go a little bit sooner. Um, you know, the, the Titans signed one target in Adam Humphreys, and then obviously the Jets uh, early on signed Jameson Crowder. So I, I like those signings. It, you know, Brendan Beams has done a really nice job here. He hasn't gone crazy necessarily with any of these deals. A lot of them are uh, can be you can get out of them pretty quickly. You, a lot of them one one year, some of them two years. So even if these deals don't work out long term, you know, Bean's not going to put himself in a situation that the previous regime did with their cap space. Exactly, and I think going into this this week, the the big goal was for Brandon Bean and the entire Bills front office was okay. Let's fill our needs now so we can go into the draft where the Bills have 10 picks. I mean, that's something that, you know, in the excitement of what's going on here with all of these, you know, uh, names flying around, something to remember. I mean, we're a little more than a month away from the draft and the Bills have the potential to really, um, you know, bolster their roster. You look back to last season, Josh Allen, Tremaine Edmonds, Harrison Phillips, Teron uh, Johnson, four guys that were, were heavy contributors contributors in 2018 you're you're hopefully if you're Brandon Bean going to find another you know uh group of of young players that can make an impact right away but I think at the start here you look at John Brown a guy that you know we chatted last night uh, a guy that I I really thought would be a, a perfect fit for the Bills and John Brown a guy that you know can stretch the field you can use him in various places in formation. I mean, I remember like last season when the Bills played the the Ravens and John Brown was, you know, you know, uh, on a couple end around plays. Uh, he he can have an impact in so many different areas uh, of the game, and he has experience. I mean, the, the Buffalo Bills don't have any one thousand yard wide receivers on their roster in his second season uh, with Arizona. Uh, flying under the radar before this, he, he caught uh, you know a, a bunch of balls for over a thousand yards, seven touchdowns. He's done it in this league at a high level, and I, th- and I think he he brings that experience and he brings that explosiveness into this offense. Yeah, and like you said, you called it last night when we were talking about potential wide receivers. Uh, Brown was the number one name out of your mouth, so kudos to you for kind of uh, seeing that, seeing his fit in this offense, and. Uh, you know, I'm excited to see what he does with Josh Allen in 2019 and beyond. So Cole Beasley, it's funny. We, we, we haven't spent, like when I first did my top 50 free agents, uh, put it out at the beginning of January, Cole Beasley was actually in the top 10. I think I had him in, at around number six. Um, not a pat on the back in the slightest, but I think over the course of the last two months, you know, Age may may have come up, uh, lack of production last season. But the more you dig in on Cole Beasley, the more I think um, he's a very intriguing signing. Bill Barnwell from ESPN put out that I think he gave the signing a C, talked about his bad year last year. But I think Cole Beasley was pretty frustrated from everything I've gathered by looking into the situation. You get him for four years at $29 million. Adam Humphrey signed four years, $36 million. So right off the bat, it's a better deal. It's a cheaper deal. And, you know, 
similar to Humphreys, you can get out of it pretty quickly. This is a guy that, you know, has produced in this league. I think Brandon Bean knows from everybody that, you know, doing his due diligence and talking to people around the league. Tony Romo, huge fan of Cole Beasley for his reliability, always getting open. And I think Josh Allen needs those kind of players. You know, guys that are safety valves, guys that you can count on when you need him, you know, to do something, to get open, to be there for you. He'll do it, and I think that that's a, a huge plus and bonus. I give this I give this signing a much higher grade. I'm going to put out uh, a thoughts and grades uh, tomorrow morning when this uh, comes out, and I, I, you know I, I give the Cole Beasley signing a B plus. Yeah, and look at the offensive coordinator in Buffalo, Brian Dable. You know he spent a lot of his career in New England. He knows the impact that slot receivers can have on the game, can have on offenses. And Josh Allen is as far, you know, as far away as Tom Brady as a quarterback can be in terms of skill sets. I don't think he's going to be sitting back there dinking and dunking teams to death with those drop-off passes like Brady does. But like you said, it's a safety valve. It's a guy who has great footwork and can get open. So when you're in those... Uh, on, on first down and you want to you know, pick up half of, of the yards right there on first down, get five yards, six yards, he's a guy that can get, get open right away with that footwork in, in the slot. And uh, on, on crucial third down plays, he might be a go, go-to go target for Josh Allen. So I think there's a lot of value there, like you said. Uh, I think that's going to be a very uh, underrated signing when we come back and look at this one year later. And before we move on to the the two offensive linemen, the Bills now uh, in 2019 offseason have added four offensive linemen, Mitch Morris, Spencer Long, and, and, and the two guys they added today. We'll talk about them in a moment. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what these uh, this influx of talent at the receiver position means uh, for the wide receiver still on this roster. I mean, you look at Zay Jones, who will be entering his third year, coming off of a nice spike in 2018, seven touchdowns, uh, seemed to really come into his own after Calvin Benjamin uh, was kind of uh, moved out of the fold. Uh, Robert Foster, obviously, his emergence uh, has been well documented in the way that he burst onto the scene second half of the season and really built that chemistry uh, down the field with Josh Allen. And that's a, I think that's a very interesting uh, dynamic. You add a playmaker like John Brown, who has some of you know similar skill set to a Robert Foster, and now you've you kind of doubled up on, on what Josh Allen does well. And I think that you know bringing John Brown in, having the emergence of Robert Foster allows you to play Zay Jones much more on the inside. Uh, maybe you know uh, use use a lot more four wide receiver sets. I think this could benefit everybody in uh, this Buffalo uh, passing game. Yeah, absolutely. The four wide receiver set is exactly what I'm thinking because, you know, you want Robert Foster and John Brown on the outside as much as possible. There are two burners right there, and that just goes right along with Josh Allen's skill set. You want Beasley in the slot whenever you can just because you know what he can do there, like we've said with his footwork. And Zay Jones, like as you mentioned as well, had a spike in his production last year. Uh, there's no sign that he's going to be – uh, tapering off in year three. So get those guys out there on the field. Give Josh Allen as, as many targets as possible. Um, you, you have some tight ends now too, and Tyler Croft and Jason Kroom, and, and maybe in round one or round two, they're aggressive for one of the top tight ends in the draft as well. And, and all of a sudden, you look at the weapons around him, and, and no one's going to say, oh, he has the best weapons in the NFL in, in year two. But, boy, I think people will agree that they're a lot better on paper uh, than they were last year entering, you know, when, when Josh Allen first saw action with the Bills. You know, there was a take that, you know, the Bills shouldn't even consider a, a tight end at, at number nine. And, you know, I, I know that traditionally speaking, that's not a, a value spot for a tight end. But I think that the way that tight ends are impacting the game if you think that a TJ Hawkinson or a Noah Font, and let's remember, Noah Font's uh, stock has kind of uh, wavered a little bit over the course of the last month and a half. But, you know, as we were approaching the end of the college football season, everything I read said that Noah Font was a can't miss athletic freak of a wide receiver, you know, or of a tight end that can, you know, is almost like a de facto wide receiver at times. And I think if you can add that to your offense, you're just. You add another dynamic. You look at what Travis Kelsey can do in Kansas City. You look at what Zach Ertz can do at Philadelphia. What Rob Gronkowski has done. Bills fans have watched him torment them for for you know a decade almost. I think that you know if you think that 
though either of those two guys, TJ Hawkinson, Noah Fant, even if it's Irv Smith, can be that game changer, I don't think there's a pick too high with especially considering how many holes they filled in free agency. Yeah, you know, you know, I just published my ten thoughts on the early tampering period and I said after all of these moves that Bean has pulled off, uh, I feel like, you know, you could still go offensive tackle if you want a Juwan uh, Taylor, if, if you want a Jonah Williams, if you want something like that. Andre Dillard is another name that I think will, will climb up the draft board. But I, I also think now you could target three specific positions. Uh, defensive end, because there was one rumor, and it was shot down here about Frank Clark a few days ago. But then you, you see that they're bringing Ziggy Ansa for a visit tomorrow, so, uh, or so, in the near future at least. And if you don't sign him, well, well, then maybe Edge Rusher is on the top of your board, and maybe Brian Burns out of Florida is the guy that you can get at number nine. Mm-hmm. And maybe defensive tackle is still high on your board because Jordan Phillips resigned, but it's just for one year. So maybe Ed Oliver is the direction you go. But then on offense, that's the one, uh, the one position where I think, yeah, that might be where they go in round one. TJ Hawkinson, he may not have the speed of Noah Font, but when, when you really look at his overall skill set, this is a complete tight end from day one. He can block, he can catch the ball. When he does catch the ball, he does a good job of separating from defenders. Uh, this is you know, not a 40-yard dash in the NFL. You don't get down in position and take off. So sometimes those numbers are a little bit deceiving. I think he's a guy that could come in immediately – and contribute uh, with some success as a rookie in Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, the secret uh, is out uh, on these Iowa tight ends. I mean, look at the success that George Kittle had in San Francisco last year, and you're not going to get the crazy value when you find a player or a position in this league, which is definitely a copycat league, that are, that are having the impact on the offensive side of the ball like some of these guys are having. Uh, speaking of the offensive side of the ball, a big uh, need this offseason was the offensive line, and Brandon Bean is going hard already. Uh, another two uh, offensive line uh, players uh, set up to, to have deals finalized when free agency officially begins. Uh, Ty and Seke, pronounce his name for me? It sounded like you already had that. Ty and Seke. Ty and Seke. This guy is massive. Wow. Looking at some of his uh, tape, uh, 6'8", uh, 325 pounds, uh, a guy, uh, a swing tackle that can kind of play on both sides, but has, has really excelled as a, a as a replacement at left tackle. Man, as a guy that's been waiting for an opportunity, opportunity awaits in Buffalo. And, you know, you're talking about, you know, wanting to light a fire under Deion Dawkins. Uh, that could be an interesting camp, camp battle. Uh if uh, Inseke wants to d- battle for that starting job, maybe. Yeah, you know, and when you cover a team, you're not supposed to have guys that you root for. But when I was writing that release today about the, the whole story about the Bills signing him, you, you can't help but say, okay, this is a guy that I think fans are going to easily root for. Uh, I could see other people pulling for him as well. He, he played his first few years in the Arena League. Didn't even get really any looks in the NFL. Uh, three or four seasons in the Arena League, gets an opportunity with this then St. Louis Rams, plays two games, and then kind of floats around on off-season rosters, um, has a very short stint in the CFL, had like another week stay in the uh, Arena League at one point, and then finally gets uh, a chance with Washington where he gets called up uh, or where he makes the 53-man roster, and he's the swing tackle. And then when he gets to actually start, he performs very well, and he holds his own. And, 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 you know, now he's almost at the end of his career. He's 33 years old. You don't know how much longer these offensive tackles will play. Hopefully he lasts the two years of the deal in Buffalo and plays at a very high level. Uh, but this is a guy that just never gave up on his dreams. And now all of a sudden he, he's cashing in uh, 7.7, I believe, million of his contract is guaranteed. So this is a guy that you can't help but feel happy for. Uh, this is a guy that, you know, I know he played a lot of snaps at left tackle in Washington, but I think he's going to get an opportunity possibly to win the right tackle job if the team wants to keep Dawkins at left tackle. Uh, it, it won't necessarily stop the Bills from taking an offensive tackle in round one, but I could also see them saying, okay, if he holds his own here early on, maybe we can then push down that, uh, that position until round two or round three. 
uh, and, and there would be some talented players there that you wouldn't necessarily have to get in the lineup in year one that can kind of be groomed for a season. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing about some of these tackles, especially you know at the top of the big boards, is there's some versatility even at the draft uh, at, at the uh, draft level. You look at a uh, Jonah Williams, you look at a Dalton Reisner, two guys that you know a lot of experts predict might be better off in the at the next level playing inside. So you know you you take a chance on a guy that you really like, like a Dalton Reisner that fits into your culture, uh, brings all of those intangibles and you know that mean streak and you know. Uh, all the you know ability on the field, and you bring and you're you, you're able to reach for them, and you have that those those different options, and I think that's something we talk over and over about with this regime is they love to have options, they love to have competition. Uh, it's part of the culture. It's part of Sean, what Sean McDermott you know is building here is he wants people to you know never quite feel like they uh, they have anything uh, made, and I, I think that that's something very interesting to to take a look at. I, I follow. Uh, Mike Renner from Pro Football Focus pretty pretty closely. I like a lot of the stuff that he puts out, and he uh, tweeted today that you know of his five top free agent deals, uh, he had a couple of them. Adrian Amos, uh, two of them were the Bills. John Brown and uh, Ty Nsike, and I think that that's uh, you know this is a very another coup for Brandon Bean, a value signing, somebody that you could bring in here and comp- compete. And, you know, the sky's the limit. Who knows? He might have finally be figuring things out and be willing to, you know, really grab this opportunity. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, the other signing, John Feliciano, uh, uh, a depth guard coming over from Oakland, uh, only had about three games where he played significant uh, snaps last year. Uh, 53 against uh, the Chargers, 50 against Indy, and 67 against Pittsburgh late in the season. In that middle game, 50 against the Colts, uh, 80.5 PFF grade in pass blocking, 71.4 in run blocking. Again, on 50 snaps, I mean, you know, he's had in spots, uh, you know, shown that he can compete in this league. And, and I think that's a guy that you bring into the fold and, you know, push some guys. Yeah, and he brings versatility, and that's another word that this regime loves. He can play pretty much anywhere along the inside of the offensive line. Obviously, he's not going to get a sniff at center unless something happens to Mitch Morse. But here's a guy that could play behind Wyatt Teller and push for his job. Or he could compete with Spencer Long for the other starting job. Uh, Again, adding that uh, player with that versatility, adding that depth in there. It helps the Bills come April when it comes time for the draft because if they feel comfortable with the guys they have on their roster, they may not have to. And not that I think Brendan Bean would necessarily reach for a player, but he's not going to be necessarily weighting these guards more heavily uh, in round two or in round three than another position. Uh, if he feels comfortable with the current players there, which obviously these are guys that they've targeted. These are guys that they feel could come in and contribute right away in 2019. So before we get out of here, uh, quickly, Ryan Groy, Jonathan, um, John Miller, and John, and Jordan Mills, are they all three gone? You know, if I were to guess, I'm going to say yes. Unless we get to the third wave of free agency, I mean, we're not even in the second wave yet, but if they're still sitting out there on the market, it, I wouldn't put it past Brandon Bean to say, okay, why don't you come in, we'll give you one year, you know, a very small amount of guaranteed money. You can compete in training camp. You can try to, to win a roster spot, win some time on this offensive line. Because at the end of the day, there's a new offensive line coach, so it could be a little bit different. So some of these guys that struggled last year, could actually be better off in this current system uh, under Bobby Johnson. It, it could simply be, uh, again, the value having someone that is already familiar with the offense come in. It maybe yeah it gives them a little bit of a leg up against some of these new faces in terms of the terminology. But but like you said, they want competition. They want people to not get comfortable with the you know their job. So they want to be pushed a little bit. So I, I think right now I would say yes, they're most likely gone. But if they sit on that market, the longer they sit, the more likely it is that they may be willing to come back for a very small amount of guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, if you've been following uh, this uh, tampering period, hoping that the Bills would sign 
you know, top target, Daryl Williams, right tackle from Carolina. He is still out there. Not a lot of action uh, on, on Daryl Williams, not hearing really much of anything, but a name that, you know, you, know, you see all these signings and you probably sit back and be like, oh, well, that maybe that takes the bills out of the out of the market. But, you know, they're still looking at about $40 million worth of cap space. I mean, it's not over yet. No, absolutely not. And you're right. It's been kind of a quiet market for him. I'm wondering if teams are going to be bringing him in before committing to him. He's coming off of a pretty serious injury. Uh, they, they probably want to see how that looks, how he's doing, where he's at, before they, they try to, you know, lock him down to a, a contract that pays him quite a bit of money because I still think he'll do fairly well in the market. Uh, but, but again, just like Ziggy Ansa with the Bills, coming in for a visit, I think some teams might be calling Daryl Williams in before they commit any money to him. That is Ryan Talbot. I am Matt Perino. Guys, keep it locked on to nyupinsyracuse.com all week for all your free agent coverage. Uh, And we'll maybe check in again tomorrow. This was fun. Absolutely.